Good afternoon. Hi, I'm Casey Durango of Go Keto with Casey. And it's Saturday, high noon. Sun is actually shining here, so pleased. Hope everyone is well. I like to talk about how I've lost 97.4 pounds since starting the ketogenic diet, how you might be able to lose weight, improve your health, and regain control of your lives. Uh, today, oh, some folks are here already. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> Graham's World TV. I can't believe I get finally get to watch one of these live. Thank you. You spell my name with a K, but it's actually with a C, but that's all right. Um, today's topic, as the title implies, is great expectations, which, um, excuse me, many people have when they hear wondrous stories, success stories, before and after stories, Plattered all over media of tremendous weight loss and a quick amount of time and the weight just melts off you like magic once following a well-formulated ketogenic diet. While the properties are life-changing, it is not magic. It's actually physiology. But also, our expectations should be realistic. I'm going to give you my story. I'm not a medical. Sorry. Same thing happened on the Facebook Live. Cuckoo is Cuckoo is late, and Cuckoo does not have a minute hand, so it's a it's a game we play around here trying to get it synced up. Um, my story: I've lost ninety seven point four pounds since started the ketogenic diet. I was very heavy for thirty years, from my mid twenties until my mid fifties. I don't have the ability to share a screen so I can't show you my before photos which were not taken at my heaviest but you can see them at my blog kcdurango.com and I'd given up on losing weight several of those photos you'll see sadly I'm in a bathing suit of all things at um, a sprint level triathlon I even tried to move more eat less so I trained for and participated in four or five sprint level triathlons trying to do that and I was sore the whole time hungry the entire time, and lost a grand total of 11 pounds. Anywho, I started this protocol, which is to keep, the, the protocol is this, reduce your carbohydrate intake to a level where your liver is no longer pushing out glucose for fuel. Once that happens, your body happily turns to burning ketones or fat for fuel. That's it. For most people, baseline, to make that work, you're going to be looking at 20 total grams of carbohydrate or fewer a day. Carbohydrate is not an essential macronutrient, so you don't have to have any. Um, so you can have almost nothing. Vegetables are not required. Some people love to hear that. Some people say, what? No vegetables? I've gotten to the point where I eat very few vegetables because I eat much less. I need less fuel. And what I'm going to eat, I'm always going to opt for the flat fatty sources of protein uh, first. And sometimes I just don't get to the vegetables that are on the plate. And sometimes the vegetables aren't on the plate. But dramatic stories of weight loss. My story was dramatic. 97.4 pounds. That's a lot. I'm 5'1". Mid-50s when I started. I'm 60 now. That's dramatic. By any measure. But it wasn't dramatic. It was gradual. The first year, and I had a lot of weight to lose, I lost 47 pounds. That's less than a pound a week on average. And then two years to lose the remaining 50 pounds. I'd like to lose 2.6 more pounds, so I can say I lost 100 pounds, but that's just for symmetry's sake. I should probably measure in kilograms. Maybe I can find something symmetrical there. But that is normal. I'm a normal loser, gradual, average. The stories that we often hear and see, some of them are apocryphal. Some of them are designed to make you click on something so you click and then buy something. Some of them really are true and dramatic and we applaud those. But those are the ones getting posted. People are not posting their modest or gradual weight loss. They're not bragging about having lost 0.9 pounds in a month. 
Many people are thinking, man, I lost 0.9 pounds. That person lost 15 pounds. Well, the 15 pounds in a month is not the norm. The 0.9 pounds in a month is the norm, closer to the norm. So I, I hear from a lot of people. I speak with a lot of people. My suggestion, adjust your expectations. Follow the protocol. Don't keep trying to do gimmicks and tricks to speed up the process. Here's what the process is. Keep your carbs 20 grams a day or fewer, total, not net. Eat fatty sources of protein. Don't eat if you're not hungry and stop when you're satiated, no matter what the clock says. If you're not hungry, don't eat. If you're hungry, eat, but stop when you're satiated, not when you're full. The food list, which I followed, and you're welcome to go to my blog. I didn't invent it. There are about oh, 425 billion versions of the food list around. The food list I followed is at my blog. You're welcome to look at it, download it, whatever. But it's mostly just fatty sources of protein, meaning animal product with the fat that comes with it. Poultry with the skin, eggs with the yolks, ribeyes with fat, sausage, bacon with the fat, pork chops with the fat, fat, fat. Not extra fat. The food list does not include MCT oil or coconut oil. The food list is not all about oily coffee. A bunch of dietary fat can be counterproductive. So if your expectation is, is that I'm going to pound back a bunch of fat and lose weight, you might want to adjust your expectations. Because this is not about the presence of the fat that works, it's the absence of the carbs. Eat the fat that comes with the protein. It's the way nature designed it. You know, nature did not design MCT oil to come in your coffee. Nature did design animal flesh with fat, eggs with yolks, beautifully designed for us to be able to metabolize those beautifully, nutrient dense, satisfying, luscious. Another expectation, this is not a protocol about eating giant Fred Flintstone sized platters of food. Ultimately, the amount of fuel that you take in, and food is fuel, food is not love, food is not entertainment, food is not comfort, love is love. And the office was entertainment when it was on television. Food is not sport. Food is fuel. But ultimately, if you consume more fuel than your body requires for its energy needs, you won't lose weight. You may put on weight, even if it's beautifully ketogenic, even if your pie charts are just pristine. No, there's no pie chart in the protocol. There's no talk of grams or percentages of fat or protein. Fatty sources of protein are naturally satiating. So if you eat them, leave off the carbs so you're not burning glucose for fuel. If you're burning glucose for fuel, your brain will continue to ask for glucose. If in, and since we can't store glucose in our blood, if we're storing it in our blood, then we're diabetic, type 2 diabetic then our brain has to keep getting a supply of it, which is why you can eat an entire Costco-sized barrel of cheese puffs and then want some more. But eat three boiled eggs and a glass of water, you're done. If you're burning fat for fuel, there's plenty of energy on board to keep our brains humming along nicely. My brain hums much better than it used to. My brain was really off key when it was humming before. Excuse me. I've been talking a lot today and I have to talk some more. So I have to keep my whistle wet. So adjust expectations. If you're one of those people that hovers for a long time, keep in mind that losing inches without losing ounces is totally a thing. 100% it's a thing. You can weigh exactly the same on the scale and drop a clothing size. Absolutely. 
It's not alchemy. It's just physiology. Also keep in mind that if you have a lot of internal healing to do, if you have a lot of inflammation, arthritis, sore joints, even if it's not full-blown arthritis, acid reflux, irritable bowel syndrome, ulcerative colitis, headache, eczema. There's a lot of healing that needs to go on. If you have high blood sugar, if you are on medications for blood sugar, you must do this under medical supervision. You must. You must. Non-negotiable, period. If you reduce your carbs and you're still taking insulin, you run the risk of becoming hypoglycemic, which is very dangerous. I am not a medical professional. I am not a PhD. I am not a researcher. I'm a former fatty. Intelligent, well-educated, highly motivated. And all I can do is talk to you about my experiences and my understanding of how and why this works. I've been very fortunate to have access to some really smart people who find me charming. So, realistically, don't expect to lose 10 pounds a month. Don't expect to, if you lost 10 pounds the first month, don't expect to do that often. And, and adjust your thinking. How many times have you said to yourself, how many times have I read and heard, I'm so discouraged. I only lost 12 pounds in three months. Okay, first of all, around Go Keto with Casey, we have eliminated the word only in reference to things like that. 12 pounds is 12 pounds. Flip the script. Would you say, oh, I only put on 12 pounds in three months? No. You'd want to be signing up with doctor now, you know, for bypass surgery. Adjust your expectations. We applaud the people with extreme victories. But remember that the people with the average, normal, gradual experiences are not the ones posting all over social media. Like I said on Facebook, people don't drive around with stickers that say, my kid is a C student on their bumper. The ones that have stickers are, my kid is an honor roll student. My kid is an Eagle Scout. You know, people don't have stickers that say, I can't get my kid to quit playing Legends of Zelda. People don't post photographs of themselves all over Instagram of their sloppy parts of life. They don't post things on Facebook of their relationship saying 20 miserable years with this same person. They say, oh, 20 years ago, I met the love of my life. May not be able to stay in that person, but that's not what they post, right? We think other people's lives have it all together. None of us do. Well, maybe some people do. I have a pretty good life. Uh, but I don't post pictures of the, you know, dust bunnies and the cobwebs and the fact that my house is sinking into the ground. My husband is always busy working in other women's houses. And I certainly wasn't posting pictures when I was at my heaviest. Those photographs that I have on my on my blog, I never saw until in, different individuals took those photographs and sent them to me after I lost weight. Because the rule was, do not let me see a photograph of myself or I will cut you. They sent me photographs. Each person did it individually. said, I just want you to see how far you've come. I wasn't posting those photographs when I was experiencing it, even as I was losing weight, I wasn't posting photographs of myself saying, hey, I only put on a quarter of a pound this month because even my first year, even though I had a lot to lose, there were weeks and months where I not only didn't lose weight, but I went up. It was not a straight line. That's normal. I'm no special snowflake. So when I tell you if I can do this, 
You can do this. I will tell you where I was ahead of the game. I was so miserable inside my brain when I started this. I have the best life of anybody I know. But I was miserable in my brain when I started this. I was not trying to lose weight. I'd given up. I just didn't want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes. That was it. I had given up on losing weight. I'd been diagnosed and treated for cancer three times since my since I was pregnant with our third child. And I, I could somehow justify dying of cancer, if that was to be. But I could not see losing a foot or a kidney or my eyesight to type 2 diabetes. And I certainly didn't want to take insulin. I would be mortified. So I'd given up on losing weight, but I didn't want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes. I was so miserable inside my own head that my expectations were not about losing weight. My expectations were, I don't want to take insulin for type 2 diabetes. So the weight came off, and then I started feeling better. Almost immediately, within three weeks, my joint pain, I was fat. I mean, all of my, you know, one of my great things I'm happy about is that I have knuckles now instead of dimples. But I would stand up. I remember standing up from our sofa and realizing, oh, my gosh, I just stood up without groaning. It was not because I'd lost a lot of weight. I probably lost barely any weight. It had been three weeks. But I didn't hurt. And then my mood. I had been chronically depressed. Not every day, not every week, not even every month. But I would have enough episodes of depression over the years that it was debilitating. Gone. And then my brain came back. Like I like to say, I used to be really smart. And then in my mid 40s, I kind of got loopy. And now I'm smart again. The only change was food. You know, when you're a middle aged woman, you're told, oh, you, yeah, okay, yeah, you're losing your mind because menopause. And so suck it up, buttercup. This is as good as it gets. What a terrible message. But it is the message we are delivered. And it's one of the reasons I do this. I heard from so many people when I started making these little videos. Because this is not my career. I had a different career for 30 years. I heard from so many people said, I am so grateful to hear from someone who is not a 20-something bodybuilder. We love 20-somethings. I've given birth to 20-somethings. They weren't 20-somethings when I gave birth to them. I was a 20-something once. But the message to people over 30, 40, 50 is very different than, than what we can expect when we're 22 and a dude or 22 and a fit athlete. It's just a different thing. The, me the mechanism is different. Hey, honey, my husband just walked in. Good flight? Yes. Okay. My husband is a general aviation pilot and he owns a Mooney and he just got back from flying his Mooney. So he'll be happy for the rest of the day. Um, we've been sold a bill of goods. But our expectations should not be that I'm going to start eating ribeyes covered in butter and pimento cheese and sour cream. And I'm going to lose weight magically. The expectation should be first. I'm going to start fueling my body the way it's actually designed to be fueled. Let's just fall back to that. It's not magic. This is the way we're designed. Now, which is not to say vegans, vegetarians, whatever floats your boat, whatever works for you. If you're happy, healthy, high functioning, no matter what size you are, good for you. Continue on with what makes you feel good and makes you healthy. For me, my body, I'm convinced of it, was designed to be fueled with fatty sources of protein. A little bit of full fat dairy every now and again. And I need much less fuel. Listen to your body. I don't, I don't know what time it is when I eat. I eat if I'm very hungry and I don't eat if I'm not hungry. 
And I stop when I'm satiated, which is really a good trick because the impulse is to just finish your food on your plate, no matter how little you've served yourself. And sometimes I serve myself very little. And I realize our friend Helena, who is a patron, I'm going to give a plug to patrons in a minute. Uh, she says she started implementing a mid-meal break. So she eats, puts down her knife and fork about halfway through and just stops eating for a minute. I don't know whether she gets up and, you know, folds half a load of laundry or whatever she does. And sometimes she comes back and says, I don't need the rest of that food. And that's okay. We shouldn't be eating till we're stuffed. So anywho, expectations. Make them realistic. Celebrate every victory. Perhaps what we need to do is make the scale the last measure of our success. How about we feel better? How about we sleep through the night? How about we don't have acid reflux? How about we don't need a mid-afternoon nap? How about I don't need to take my, my migraine medication for the first time in years? How about my blood pressure might be coming down. How about I don't need to take Tums anymore? How about I can get up off the sofa without groaning? How about my jeans are fitting looser? Then we can worry about the scale. Scale is cosmetics. Let's not be so shallow. Let's get healthy. Not to say, if you're a big person, say, I'm just going to be big and happy and I don't care what my health is because I'm going to live my life. If you want to do that, that's totally fine. I was a big person. I was not healthy and I was not happy. Some people are very at peace in their own skin. I was not one of those people. Okay. Thank you very much for this attention. I am going to give a quick plug to Patreon, patreon.com slash go keto with Casey. I make most of my content is for patrons only. It's a closed group. I make about 20 videos a month there. They're eight to 15 minutes long weekday mornings. Plus, depending on your pledge level, about half dozen patron only live streams where the patrons lead the conversation as opposed to me just talking. Um, and about half a dozen patron only video group sessions, which I'm having one in just a little bit. And hour long video one on ones with me a month depending on. Plus, there's a patron-only forum. So thank you to patrons. I'm going to guess there are some here because there usually are. And uh, let me see. March 11th, if you are in the Greensboro, North Carolina area, I will have a Bokita with Casey meetup at Wine Styles at Friendly Center. Very informal. Not selling anything. Although, I do I remind me about the pop sockets. Um, no email collections. It's an informal. We sit around a couple of tables drinking wine or sparkling water, whatever you care for, and share our experiences. So March 11th, 615 to whenever everybody leaves at Wine Styles at Friendly Center in Greensboro. And three weeks from today, by this point, my husband and I will be embarking on a cruise with a bunch of people. Go Keto with Casey dot 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 the cruise leaving Port of Miami for the Western Caribbean celebrity. Equinox. Going to be fun. We are having some speakers who are going to, um, they're actually very smart nurses and teachers who are going to be talking about energy medicine, yoga, meditation, five things you should do for yourself every day. We're going to have Keto Jeopardy. We're going to have Q&A with me. We're going to have prizes. We're going to have martini tasting. We're going to have a good time. That is three weeks from today. Okay. So I'm going to thank you, everyone, for joining in. Um, hey, Vita, patron. Um, I'm trying to steer clear of information thrown out there to sell products. You know, and this is a very, um, hey, Kat from the UK. This is, it's, we're just going to get through this. The keto is the, is the marketing term now. It's not a fad diet, but it is, it is a fad marketing term. So you can find keto, no kidding, salt, keto, coffee, not meaning about bulletproof coffee, which, by the way, you don't need. I mean, like I said, MCT oil, coconut oil, all that stuff's not on the food list. But just coffee beans, keto coffee beans. 
Stop it. Um, I'm waiting for someone to come out with autophagy powder or autophagy cream. For those of you who don't know, autophagy is a cellular level that's supposed to help. They cannibalize dead cells to help rejuvenate and all stuff. It's, someone's going to come out and try to market that. Um, Slim Fast has keto shakes. Do we really think they reformulated their shakes or do we think they just reprinted the cans? I'm waiting for Weight Watchers keto version, which will be, guess what? Keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day total, not net. Eat fatty sources of protein. Don't eat if you're not hungry. Stop when you're satiated. But anyway, if, if a product, for my recommendation, this would be this. If a product has the word keto on it, on the package, pass, pass. It's a non-regulated term. Just like, you know, there was a thing about su supplements and it turned out that there was a pretty famous company that was selling garlic pills. You know, garlic was the big thing. Garlic is supposed to be so good for you. And garlic, garlic, garlic can be good for you. But there were garlic pills. And so on the label, it said all the benefits of garlic, which may or may not be true, but it turns out the pills had no garlic in them. But it was okay because supplements are non-regulated. So is the term keto. So is the word to look at. So that's my recommendation. The people with whom I've spoken who have been the most successful have simply not played around. They have followed the protocol. And that's what I did. Again, I am not special. I don't have a super great metabolism. I was super fat for 30 years. I had an unhealthy relationship with food. Uh, it resolved. One of the beauties of this protocol is you eat less food because you want less food, because your appetite is suppressed, because you're satiated, because you're giving your body the nutrients it needs. Imagine that. Our bodies are happy when we feed them the way they're designed. Losing hunger pains is wonderful. Oh, okay. So now, now here we go. My latest swag. And I love, actually, this is my favorite thing. You may know that I have shirts and mugs that say food is not the boss of me. Plus it's a page on, on the calendar, one of the calendars. Look at these. It's probably in reverse, but it says food is not the boss of me. It's a pop socket, which I did not know was a thing, but it is a thing. You put these on the backs of your phone, back of your phone, and it, it expands out and it gives you a little handhold so that you can more easily take selfies or text or do whatever. And it says, food is not the boss of me. So got those. I'm tickled. I love that. Freedom from food. So you can find those at my blog. You don't have to purchase one thing, not one thing to be 100% successful at this protocol. Um, not even pop sockets, not even mugs. Not even blank journals, not even grocery bags that say this bag is a carb-free zone, all of which you can find at my blog under the swag department. All of these items, by the way, have been suggested and requested. And I want to give a shout out to my friends at campusmarketing.com. Not a sponsor, but a friend of the show. Tiny little needs like somebody like me to big universities. They can do everything from pop sockets to pens to to hula hoops to frisbees to backpacks to mugs to whatever. They do all my swag. Campusmarketing.com. Okay, enough of that. Let's go on to, I'm going to, see, I'm going to just scroll to the bottom of the messages. And, and I don't think it, if, if anyone did a super chat and I didn't see it, I'm, I apologize the super chats when you're supposed to be able to pin your comment or question to the top and it lingers there. It actually costs less in the long run to eat the keto way. It absolutely does. We just had this on the Facebook Live. My husband and I, this is born out in our grocery bill. You eat less because you need less because the food is can be more expensive ounce for ounce, but it's more valuable. There's actually nutrition in it. And your appetite is satiated earlier. We used to go out and each of us, both of us, not each of us, both of us would get a big steak 
and a baked potato or house fries and a big salad. And we will have eaten the rolls and for the you know basket of bread or whatever they bring out. And we would have eaten all of that. And I probably would have ended up with some dessert. Now, we can split a steak, maybe have some left over. My husband had a little side of green beans. Usually I don't have any because I'm kind of off. I'm just not eating many vegetables. Maybe half an avocado. That's it. That's, that's our fuel for the evening. It's good, valuable, luscious food. Scallops, shrimp, ribeye, prime rib, thick pork chops, thick cut bacon, Italian sausages, poultry with the skin, Mm, full fat sour cream, luscious cheeses, smoked Gouda. Wow, very good stuff. Jane writes, I'm afraid to stop the Bulletproof because it helps me with cravings. Whatever works for you. It's a lot of calories and fat though, I'll tell you that. But if it works for you, awesome. Whatever works for you. You know, I often said, don't let an app tell you what to eat because I'll get questions. Oh my God, I'm... My fitness pal tells me I need 200 more calories and I'm stuffed. What do I do? Don't let an app tell you what to eat. And don't let me tell you what to eat. I can only tell you what worked for me. But I can tell you I'm pretty average. I'm normal. I'm an, I'm, I am you. Pretty much. I've had several of my body parts taken away for cancer. I have... Uh, Postmenopausal. I had chronic medical conditions. I'm a normal person on this day and age. If I can do this, you can do this. The Bulletproof coffee would not work for me. It's just too calorically dense and too much. Plus, I'd rather have a ribeye. You know, if I want to keep my cravings at bay, I eat steak for breakfast sometimes. If that's if there's leftover steak and I need fuel at some point, I don't know what time it might be. I'm okay with steak dipped in um, blue cheese dressing. Jan Jana writes, I'm not losing any weight at all. Well, that is a really broad statement, Jana, and I have no idea what that might be. If when I, I do coaching, when I people say I'm not losing, but I the first question I ask is, are you burning fat for fuel? Do you know whether you are in ketosis? Yes, yes, yes. I'm measuring by urine. I'm measuring by blood, whatever. Okay. You're burning fat for fuel. Are you taking in a lot of dietary fat? By that, I mean bulletproof coffee, MCT oil, coconut oil, butter, fat bombs. No, no, don't do that. Have you lost inches? Nope, not lost any inches. Then the next question is, are you just eating more food than you need? Or if you're maintaining your weight, you're eating exactly the amount of food you need to maintain your weight. But ultimately, the amount of fuel you take in counts, whether it's ketogenic or not. Again, Fred Flintstone, giant platter of brontosaurus. Just because it's keto doesn't mean Fred's going to lose any weight. He might stay perfectly round if he keeps eating that and he doesn't need it. Okay. Okay. Good for you, Pablo, and your gross little self. Um, what's the story of the necklace? You always worry. I get a lot of questions about this. This is from the Chipcha tribe in Colombia. My husband is from Colombia, South America. Pablo, you wouldn't want to meet my husband face to face with that filthy mouth you've got. Um, and he brought it back to me with earrings, which I, I'm not wearing the earrings right now. He brought me back other earrings from Colombia that are little coffee beans because we own a coffee farm. They have little tiny emeralds in them. And this is emeralds from Colombia. This has a little emerald in the top. And it's from the Chipcha tribe. I wear this every single day. I, you can see it on my before photos at the triathlon. I'm wearing this even when I went swimming. Probably not smart, but I did. I love it. 
Alimo writes, my cravings always happen when I have nothing in the house that I fancy, but the wrong stuff seems to be there. Here's the thing, Ali, and I'm going to guess you're a Brit the way you put that, but I fancy. Um, cravings are not deadly. They're also not uncontrollable. They're also not an um, involuntary reflex. You can get through a craving. We tell ourselves we can't do things. That's an excuse. Seriously. I couldn't give up tortilla chips. I could not do it until I did. We tell ourselves we can't do something. We tell ourselves we're powerless over food. Think about that. So there's something you fancy. Oh, well, are you going to pass out if you don't have it? We need to start taking some ownership of our decisions. We need to. We are not victims of food. Food is not the boss of me. So don't eat it if you don't need it. That was a new phrase. We just came up with that one yesterday on a live stream, a patron live stream. If you don't need it, don't eat it. Coglantis writes, today's my 11th month anniversary with Dr. Westman's Heal Care program. Down 30 pounds and type 2 diabetes in remission. Yay! Um, I'm sorry, I'm clicking, removing somebody. YouTube brings out naughty, vulgar statements. I don't know why that is. Carmen Arango, many besos de Colombia. What part of Colombia? Oh, Mary T. writes, took my quote after picks this week. 60 years old, down 55 pounds. Don't you love that? Mary, were you ever in kind of, was it implied or was it explicitly told you? Oh, uh, after a certain age, you know, easier that you might levitate across the ground, above the floor than to lose weight. Congratulations. La Costa. Mi esposo es de Viterbo Caldas. Um, Tennessee, th hey Tennessee Thrifter. She writes, I'm 70 and down 73 pounds and kept it off for two and a half years. And they said it couldn't be done, right? Right? Am I right? My girlfriends still complain about their aches and pains and brain fog and blame age. You know, and this is uh, something we run into in our in our closed group. It's easy to get frustrated at those around us who do complain and bemoan their fate and all that, and won't make the make a change. But you know, you got to meet people where you find them. And for some people, they believe they can't give up certain things because we tell ourselves we can't do something. And guess what? When you tell yourself you can't do something, you probably won't do it. 18 years cancer free. I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. And because of this way of eating, I finally am pain free and clear headed. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. And uh, y'all were talking about cheese. You know, what's interesting about cheese, I find the tangier, the sharper, usually the more expensive, the cheese, the less I eat. It's just, it gives me something and it bites out, you know, some plain old, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe plain old cheddar cheese. I could just probably eat mindlessly. But Manchego, Dublin or cheddar, that's pretty tart. I love Gouda. 
what aches and pains? Keto brought them and carried them away. Isn't that amazing? To not be in physical pain? It's fantastic. It's fantastic. We've got two people on our Patreon group who have lupus, both of whom have experienced greatly diminished um, episodes of lupus flares and are off all of their medications. The untold story of this, it's more than about fitting in a size six jeans. It's more than that. It's great fun. Actually, actually, I'm wearing size four now. Not right now, I'm wearing something else right now. But um, my last jeans were size four, Calvin Klein's. Starting at 24W, down to four. That's fun. No kidding. Clothes are more fun. But being super healthy even more fun. Hey, Nancy. I love the coastal cheddar at Costco. Love it. Yep. Off all of my rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis meds. Fantastic, Lynn. That it, Lynn Byerly. That's fantastic. Elaine writes, let's talk a lot more about cheese food of the golds. Tennessee Thrifter says, yay. Gene size four, that's tiny. Okay, uh, Marianne Delovi, you must have just joined. Do I use MCT oil? I've said about four times in this live alone, and I say it in almost all. No, no, MCT oil is doesn't do anything, and it can be counterproductive. I'll tell you why MCT stands for medium chain triglyceride, medium chain fat. It cannot be stored, so it must be burned. So it's going to be the first thing to be burned when you're burning fat for fuel. So if you're drinking all the fat, so say you turned over to burning fat for fuel, great. If you're drinking the fat that your body requires for its energy needs, it's not going to, not going to touch other parts of your body. So no, no, I don't. You know, I've got the food list that I followed. And seriously, if it wasn't on that food list, I didn't eat it. Which is a totally ripped off phrase from Dr. Westman's page four. If not on page four, don't eat it. If it was not on that food list, which frankly is page four, I didn't eat it. And MCT oil, not on the list. Okay, I'm going to start to wrap up. I have got a video group chat coming up. And um, thank you for showing up and letting me part, letting me be part of your um, Saturday. And another shout out to patrons. Thank you to patreon.com slash go keto with Casey, which allows me, allowed me to, to leave my previous career so that I could talk about this amazing experience. And it's just food. You don't need to purchase any specialty food or oil or powder or shake or supplement. It's just whole food. Shop the perimeter of the grocery store. All those cliches that you've heard. You're welcome to look at the food list I followed. I didn't invent it. But it's just a list of food animal products. And I'm so happy that my neighbors leave their dogs out all day long to bark constantly. Peace to all, writes Mary. I like that. Peace to all. After a while, crocodile. See you later, alligator. Toodaloo, caribou. See you soon, you big baboon. This is all things I've learned from my people. Okie dokie. Thank you. Hopefully I'll see you next Saturday. Hopefully. And don't don't forget to check out pop sockets and mugs and shirts because food is not the boss of me and it shouldn't be of you either.